Hi. I heard you're looking for a camera for your sister. Is that right? Okay. I have a few different cameras for you. Um, I know you said in, in the sheet that she already has a DSLR, so I was thinking for something different, you can get her an analog camera. What do you think? Yeah, like an old school. Okay, great. So I brought four different analog cameras for you. They're all super fun, and I think you'll be able to find something that you think she'll like. Okay, great. So, I'll start you off with the most popular one, or the most well-known. It's rather heavy, though, so think about that in terms of luggage and all of that. Yeah, I know. Thinking, thinking ahead for you. So, it's a Polaroid camera. Yes. Um, despite being heavy, it fits pretty well in the hand. You can grip this part, and... Um, yeah, same old Polaroid camera. They did, right, so they did stop making the film for this briefly for older models. Um, you can't get film anymore unless it's very expired and probably very expensive. Um, but this is a newer model and they have con found a way to continue making the, the film. I know, thank goodness, right? So this one does require batteries. The other three do not. You just put them in here. I think it's uh, four double A's. Yeah. And then you turn it on with this red button here. It does have a certain um, range that you can choose from between one and three meters. And there's also a flash button. You can lighten the shot or darken it as well, which is pretty sophisticated for a Polaroid camera or any analog camera, really. Yeah. So, you figure out what you want to do. You look through the viewfinder here. You push the button, and then it makes a sort of printing sound, and the picture comes out of this slot, like so. You take it out, and you wait for it to develop. Mm-hmm. Yes, so the film is put in here, in the back. Hang on, and I will show you. So it's put in the back with these uh, little canisters. This one, I believe, is empty. I will give you... Or no, it's not empty. Great. But this camera does need batteries. Luckily, um, it comes with a black sheet over the film. That way it won't be exposed if you don't want it to be. But you basically take this canister, line up the yellow line with this yellow dot on the inside. Like that. And close this. When you put new film in, the first shot that you take will be um, a blank shot. Yeah, just it gets rid of that black cover, and then from there you'll have uh, you'll have film coming out. So I just say that in case you put in new film and you have the perfect shot lined up for your first one, and then uh, something happens and you miss it because you thought that you were taking a picture, but really you were just getting rid of the cover film. Yeah, so just so you know, you have to tell her that. What do you think? Okay, yes, so you're probably already familiar, but the film looks like this. It's not a very good picture, which is why we use it for sampling and selling mm -hmm. when we go around and show people our cameras. And so it has this shape. Uh, previously, Polaroids were square, so like this. Now this model comes in a longer shape. What happens basically is all of the chemicals that you would typically use to process the film in a dark room or when you send the film out are contained in this little pouch here. It's hard to tell, but it has a little pocket here that when you take the, the picture, it's pushed out 
and over the image to develop the exposed image and then also set it so that way when it comes out and you pull it you don't need to worry while it's still processing about the sunlight hitting it and messing up your picture because it's already been set uh, with the chemicals here it's pretty cool yes okay so that's a pull yeah, I'd figure you had heard of it, but just thought I would give you a little extra information. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to show you some strange cameras. Alright, I'm going to start you off with this one. Yes, so this is a 360 degree analog camera. So um, you use it with 35 millimeter film. There's some in here, but it's already been exposed, so I'll just show you very quickly. There's this little notch on the side that you push down, and you can open the back. And there's the film. Yes, so just close that up. Of course, when you are doing this, you wouldn't want uh, to expose your film when it's in there, but again, it's for show. So. The cool thing about this is it comes with a handle, so because you're going to be taking a very um, complicated photo, a panoramic, 360 degrees essentially, with a plastic camera that's using 35 millimeter film, it's nice that it has a handle. You can also put it onto a table or any other level surface, and it even has a level on the top so you can make sure that you you have everything flat and even. Yes, it's very useful. Yeah, so clever. And so then we have a little attachment where you can affix a flash if you choose. Um, this is where you would wind the film after you're done shooting. You wind it up before you take it out. And so basically what you do to take a picture with this is you get it set up so, like, here, and then you pull this little string, and it goes around in a circle, and takes a picture while it does it. You'll notice that, um, the aperture there is, like, a little slit, and that makes it easy, easier for it to take a panoramic photo. Yeah, similar, I mean, when you take a panoramic photo, even with your smartphone, when you're going around, it's also taking information in little slit-sized pieces and building them up to make the full image. And that's why sometimes you get those weird shapes of people moving and things like that. Yes, you want to see again? Okay, so it's just like this, and you let it go. That was a long one. Okay. So, it's pretty sturdy too. It's a great option. Yes. Yeah, 35 millimeter. Mm hmm Very common. Yeah, just like the ones like this, you know, you can get at any store, really. Yeah. So, it just looks like this. You have a little there that you feed through. Mm-hmm. No problem. more cameras to show you, and I'll show you another one that's also 35 millimeter, uh, just because we're on the topic. So unlike the other one, which was a full 360 panoramic uh, camera, this is a panoramic camera uh, that takes single shots, like a strip, like of mountain ranges or the length of a beach or something like that. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty small, so you can take it anywhere pretty easily. Again, we have this in case you want to add flash. Here's the viewfinder. Take off the lens just to show you the lens cap. So it looks like this. It is called the Sprocket Rocket Panoramic Camera. Yeah, I know. It's pretty shiny, pretty new. Yeah. So like that. 
then um, there is film in here as well, and it hasn't been exposed, so I won't show you that part. But I will say, uh, to add the film, you just open up the back, put it in, and you're all set. Here's where you rewind it when you're all done. Um, you also have... Here you can see how many photos are left. Yeah. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward. You just point the camera where you want and take the picture by pushing, let's see, and this is to wind, this one's to wind, this one's to rewind. Here it is. So you take the, the picture by pushing this down, yeah, and then you wind it here and you're all set. Um, I'm just looking to see the focus here, so you can focus between those distances. I'm gonna do that. I don't know if you can see the lens adjust, but it will adjust accordingly. Yes. Okay. Okay, so final camera. Are you ready? It's my favorite, to be honest. Okay, so this is the Holga. Again, you can add flash if you want. What you do is you take these little um brackets down, you can take off this part and add the film. Although you can use 35mm film on this camera, um, I recommend using 120 or 140 or 400. So it looks like this and comes with a paper backing so you just feed it through in a similar way though it might uh, seem a, a bit different and strange if you're used to 35 millimeter. Yes, but it's not hard to find this film either. And as I was saying, you can use 35 millimeter as well. It's just that the camera will expose the entire piece of film, including the uh, f feeder holes that you use to, to get the film through the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, right, lens cap. Again, you can adjust uh, different dis for different distances here of focusing. It doesn't have the distance in meters like the other cameras. You kind of have to guess, which is half the fun. So this one is very far away, like mountains, groups of people, and like a solo shot or a portrait. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of have to play around with it. Uh, like that. Yeah. Right, so it's not that expensive, and the thing is, is, um, you have to play around with it. You have to take a risk and take some shots and not be sure how they're going to turn out, but then those are often your favorites, I find, to be honest. Yeah. So you, it kind of teaches you not to take yourself so seriously, in my opinion. I love this camera. And because you have to wind the film manually after each shot you take, you can also do double exposures and really fun things like that. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, I just wanted to show you on the back, you select either between 12 or 16, and that's um, how many exposures you get in the roll of film. In this red window, you would see the number of exposures you have left. Yes. So, uh, if you choose 12, the photos will be square, and if you choose 16, they will be uh, the typical dimensions of a photo, but instead of landscape, they'll be in a portrait mode. Yes. So some uh, square ones that I have here, just of plants as a sample, we have this one, a rose, or something in the sun. And then this one of palm trees. Mm -hmm. So this would be the size that you're looking at, like this. Okay. Yes, and there's a certain quality to the film. It is not always grainy, but um, 
It has a richness to it that is hard to find in digital film or photos, uh, which is why on Instagram, for example, you see all those filters. Uh, those filters are taken from or inspired by these analog cameras. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so it's great to play around. And I just wanted to show you too, you can mod or modify this camera. I've known people, for example, to put like very, very tiny, very tiny figurines uh, at the lip of the lens, glue them in place. For example, like a very, very tiny dinosaur, either a figurine or you could even cut out the shape of a dinosaur, like a very small T-Rex like that. Glue him here and then every photo you take, if you line it up Properly, it will appear as though there's a tiny, tiny T-Rex in the photo. Yeah, so silly stuff like that. I'm sure if you looked it up online, you could find a ton of different modifications that people have tried and really enjoyed. Yeah. Okay, well, so that's another option. Alright, so what do you think she would like best? Yeah. Good, she has good taste, or you just think she does. It's my favorite, really. Okay, so I will get that package for you. There's the box. And, um, it comes with two things here. This is just an extra window that you can put inside the camera when you, uh, in, from the same place that you insert film. And it will give a different look to your so tons of different inserts and things that you can use to play around with. Put that in the box for you. And then also a little uh, cord so you can wear it around your neck. Again, though, the camera's not expensive. So I had one for a long time with no lens cap, no cord, nothing. It was even a little um, sticky when you when you tried to take the pictures because I had taken it to the beach and the salt water got into the metal. Yeah, so, so it kind of slowed it down a little bit, but it still worked fine. I had no, no problems with it. All right, so I have it all boxed up for you. And ready to wrap. Yeah. Okay, I'm so glad. Yeah, here's, uh, oh, that's a great point. Here's some uh, other pictures that people have taken with the camera. Yeah, so you can get an idea of the different effects it, it does. It's very pretty. And because um, it's inexpensively made, Every camera has its own idiosyncrasies. Occasionally you'll get light leaks or this kind of vignette style around the photo. Uh, again, another filter. I know. It's all inspired by the analog world. I'm telling you. Okay, great. So, you're all set. Okay. Well, it was my pleasure.